Okay, before I start explaining um, watercolor portraits, I wanted to explain why it's important to use the right paper. So I have copy paper, drawing, cardstock, and watercolor. And underneath, I put the pound weight on it. The way they weigh the paper is based off of a certain amount of sheets. So 300 pound watercolor paper is based off of 500 sheets. But if you think about it, 500 sheets of copy paper is not going to weigh 20 pounds. It also depends on the manufacturer's size. So the standard size initially for manufacturing 8.5 by 11 copy paper is 17 by 22 in 500 sheets. So that's four times the amount of the, just the 8.5 by 11. So that's why it's labeled as 20 pound. So it depends on the manufacturer's size and the thickness of the paper itself. So I want to show you what happens and why it's so important to use the correct paper for whatever media you're choosing to work with. So wet wash means I'm going to wet the paper first and then I'm going to put the color on. So I'm going to wet my copy paper. Then I'm going to put my water color on. And as you can see, it's getting stuck to the table. Dry wash means I'm going to wet the paint first and then place it on the paper. As you can tell, it doesn't flow and it starts to beat up and you can tell the paper is starting to disintegrate. Now I'm going to do drawing paper. Wet it first, and as you can tell, it does work better, but it also has the same kind of look as the dry wash of the um, printer paper. Let's see what happens with just color. It's better. But if I were to go on top of it again after it dries, it would just fall apart. Cardstock. It has, it's like it absorbed color more in one place than another. So it's inconsistent. And then I'm going to try the dry wash. It's inconsistent because it's too smooth. That's what's going on. And if you try and blend, your paper will start falling apart again. And now let's try the watercolor paper. That's the look you want when it comes to watercolor. You want it to be able to flow and move. And that's one of the reasons why it has the texture on it. Dry wash. It is consistent. And if we were to go on top, it doesn't disintegrate. So just to kind of prove the point of it falling apart, I'm going to use another color. And you can already see the difference in how each one is drying. So I'm just going to do dry wash on top of each one. So it could ease, you could do two layers on copy paper, but it's not going to lay flat. Same thing with drawing paper. You 
even though it's taped down, it's not going to lay flat because it's buckling on the wet areas. Card stop. And then watercolor. All right. So now I'm just going to use a wet brush. And try and blend the colors that are already there. See the chunks of paper coming up? Residue. That one just doesn't blend at all. Ooh, that's left over. So I hope this helps you understand why you need to use watercolor paper for a watercolor project. Okay, I want to show you how to do a watercolor portrait in a way that's kind of trending right now on Instagram. Um, it's more of a wash than a realism. So you could come back over it with ink and really make elements of the picture stand out. But you want to start with just like a wash of color. Um, I'm using the Koi watercolors again, but this time I'm using them straight from the tube because I want them to be more like a paint. If you only have cake um, watercolors, like in a palette, just add a lot of water to it to dilute it, but you'll still have some intense colors to work with. So I'm going to start out by adding elements of highlights, low lights, and shadows just in the general area of her face. And then from there, once it kind of dries, I'll start adding some detail work. What's really fun about this method is you don't have to worry about it looking realistic. You just want to be able to shape the face in correct fashion. So you can, if you want to do the skin tone blue or purple or whatever it is, as long as you have consistency with where your highlights and shadows are, you can do any color you want. And since it is stylized, if you go a little bit off of her face with the color, it's okay. So now I'm going to start adding a wash of some darker areas. I'm going to give it a minute or so to dry. Now that I have a nice layer of wash down, I'm going to start shaping the face, but in the same method with a wash.
Okay, once again, I'm gonna let this dry. Okay, now that it's dried a bit more, I'm gonna start working on some detail work like the hair and the eyes.
Okay, now that it's dry, I basically have my painting how I want it. Um, except for the shirt down here, I'm just going to add some um, just color real quick and let that dry. Then we're going to come back on top of it with some um, gel pens. I'm just going to add this extra color and then I'm going to untape it and then come back to show you the next step. Okay, so it's dry now, and I want to come back on top and add some shading. Um, but I'm going to use these Papermate flare markers or pins. And I'm an, I love crosshatch. Crosshatch is one of my favorite methods of shading. So I'm going to add some shading techniques. One of my favorite things to use is um, white gel pens. This is where you can have a lot of fun with the pens because you can add so much more character to the face with precision. Okay, well I'm happy with this and I put some of that the gel pen but it, it's called glaze and let's see if you can see the shine. Oh yeah, there you go. You can see the shine. The great in this area. So it adds another level of um, texture to it. So I hope you enjoyed this and have fun.